create a new user, the admin or delegate needs to log in and then navigate to the user admin icon in the left-hand navigation. Once clicking this, they're taken right into the create user workflow as indicated by the tab in the top section. In order to create a new user, they simply need to fill in all of the required fields. Required fields are indicated by the red line in the text below. Once a user starts typing in the field, they'll be alerted that there are some requirements to the field. In this instance, a username must begin with two alpha characters and be between five and 25 characters long and can only contain the following special characters. You can see as I fill in the required fields, the red line turns to green, meaning that the requirement has been met. The email address field is also one other field that has validation. In order to be a legitimate email address, we need two things, the at symbol and either .com, .net, .org, something to that effect. Go ahead and confirm the email. And again, once you have all of the required fields met, the create user button will be enabled. During this process, we also double check that the username is unique. You can see in this instance, the username I created is not unique. So let's go ahead and supply a unique username. Try again. If it's successful, the user will get a pop-up and they will be alerted that the user has been created and that this new user will receive a welcome email indicating that an account has been created for them. We are also letting the user know that they need to proceed with adding authorizations to the user that they just created. Without authorizations, the user will not be able to perform the necessary actions that you need them to. In this message, we are also highlighting that it is the responsibility of the person who created the new user to let them know what their username is, as this piece of information is not contained within the email sent to the new user. And they will need this username to complete their login process. So from here on out, you can either create another user or go on to manage authorizations. We're gonna move forward with manage authorizations. This takes us to the view authorization page. Listed above, I have my user ID and the type of user for which I need to give them access. And you can see listed below, these are the various subgroups that the user could potentially have access to. As indicated in the left hand checkbox, this user does not currently have any authorizations. So let's go ahead and add some. To add authorization, you click edit. This will give you several options First of all, you can select to give the user access to all subgroups, maybe they need access to everything, or select to customize subgroups, maybe they only need access to one subgroup out of the four, or we could also create them as a delegate. And a delegate is a user who has a mirror image of the admin's authorizations and can also create and manage authorizations. Let's go ahead and select all subgroups. This opens up a new row into the below portion where it has subgroup ID as all, subgroup name as all subgroups, and I can go ahead and specify what access they need. In this instance, the admin only has this eligibility access, so this is only what I can assign to a user. And my admin also has access to the billing reports, so this is what I'm able to assign to a new user. A user or a delegate can never have more access than what the admin themselves has. Let's go ahead and give this member inquiry access and billing reports. Go ahead and click save. Again, another pop-up letting you know that the authorizations have been updated. You can proceed with viewing those authorizations or managing another user. Let's go ahead and look at the authorizations we just added. Now we're back at the view authorization page and you can see that there is a checkbox, the checkbox is checked, indicating that my user has access to all four subgroups. 